The DJI Mavic Pro is an amazing drone that takes 4K footage. However, the reason why I purchased this drone was to take a group shot of 300 people. So here's a quick review of how the Mavic Pro did compared to my standard method of climbing on top of a ladder and shooting the group photo with a DSLR. With absolutely no prior experience to flying drones, I had a lot to learn. Thankfully, the Mavic Pro is very easy to set up and operate, yet it still has a ton of features. The first step was setting up the drone. I had to charge the battery and the controller. As you saw in the unboxing video, this thing pretty much came fully assembled. All I had to do was install the propeller blades and it stayed on ever since. Put the battery into the drone. Expand out the wings. And prepare the drone for flight by removing the plastic cover as well as the gimbal clamp. This drone is ready for flight. Downloaded the DJI GO version 4.0 software. Initially, I had to register, took a few minutes, and I was ready to go. The joystick expands to accommodate the smartphone. We got our lightning cable adapter in place. My iPhone 6S Plus mounted with the controller. It's time to power up the drone. To do that, you push the power button once, then you push the hole for two seconds, let it go. You see the lights turn on. These lights blink, the motor spin a little bit. You see the gimbal get into position. It's looking pretty cool. So step number one is complete. That was setting up all the drone hardware. Step number two is setting up the camera so we get the quality of the picture we want. Let's open up our DJI GO app and turn on the remote control. We do that by pressing power once, press and hold the second time. You see it's connecting now. We still see a status of disconnect down here. There we go. It's connected down here. We're in GPS mode and we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and click start flight. We want to dial in the camera settings so we get the best quality image. This top button here switches between video mode and camera mode. Right now, we're in camera mode. Click down here to change the settings. This one changes from auto to manual mode. We're gonna keep everything in automatic mode because I'm a first time drone flyer and I don't wanna worry about manual exposure. But I do wanna change some settings here. In the photo mode, I can choose between a single shot, an HDR shot, multiple shots, or exposure bracketing. I actually like exposure bracketing, and I choose five exposure bracketing. As a test, to show you how the exposure bracketing works, let's take one photo now, which actually takes five photos because it's exposure bracketing. Let's go ahead and review those photos. In the review photo, you can see the exposure bracketing takes a bright shot, a darker shot, a properly exposed shot, a slightly darker shot, and a slightly lighter shot. So I have a variety of exposure to pick the perfect one. We'll keep our image size at 4 3 ratio. For image format, we really want the raw image because that gives us the most flexibility in post-processing after we take the picture. But since there's an the option for JPEG and RAW, I'm going to do that because it's backup. Just in case something goes wrong with the RAW file, I still have the JPEG image. We'll keep the white balance automatic and that's the nice thing about a RAW image is that you can keep the white balance automatic and you can adjust the white balance in post-processing. Now that our camera settings are dialed in, we're ready for flight. Step number two, which was setting up the camera, is now complete. Step number three is learning how to fly this thing. I need to learn how to start the motor, fly the drone up, lower the drone, move the drone forward, move the drone backwards, move it to the right, move it to the left, turn it this way or turn it this way, be able to control the camera gimbal angle, take the focus, and take the photo. I'm gonna turn off the controller right now so I don't actually fly the drone. To start the propeller, you put the two joysticks down just like this. Then the propeller will start to spin and when you're ready to take off, you just push the controller up and the drone will fly up. Once the drone is airborne, you push up to go up, you push down to go down. You push right here to turn right, you push left here to turn left. This one controls the forward motion to move forward, to move back, to move right, to move left, this wheel here determines the angle that the camera shoots, whether it's aiming down or up. You can tap on the screen to get focus on where you want to focus. And of course, you saw earlier the button here to take the photos. You can push this button to take photos as well. And let's not forget the most important command, how to land. So you just need to push down to start descending. As it gets close to the ground, it'll stop and hover for a bit. But as long as you keep holding down, it'll eventually descend, touch the ground and turn off the motors. And that's pretty much it. It's actually pretty easy to operate. So after learning how to set up the drone, how to set up the camera, and how to fly the drone, I was ready. I went to the location, operated the drone, make sure I can get the angle I wanted, make sure that there was no problem with interference 
or anything else and that everything worked as planned. Then I quickly charged the battery, took a deep breath, relaxed for a moment, and before I knew it, it was showtime. As 300 people made their way to the photo area, I climbed up the 9 feet ladder so that I can direct them on where to stand. Thankfully, I had a crew of people on the ground that knew where I wanted the people and helped direct the people from down there. So once everyone was in place, I got my DSLR and I asked everyone to make sure they got a clear view of the lens. That means it should be clear of obstacles in front of them. But that's never the case. So I adjusted a couple people, moved them around a little bit. There's a fine line between perfection and efficiency. Therefore, when about 95% of the people were in a good position, I went ahead and took the photo. I told everyone to look at the lens, smile, and I took the shot. Took several shots. Those are my safe shot. Once I got those photos, I asked everyone to cheer so that we got a lot of great energy. Those are always the fun shot. After we got the smiling shot and the fun shot, I pretty much got my photos. Then, it was time to bring out the drone. I fired up the drone, moved the ladder out of the way, and started to bring the drone up. There was a lot of excitement. Everyone's looking and smiling at the drone. But the problem was, it took me a while to get the drone to the right elevation, to get the right position. People started to lose focus. Even though I yelled at the top of my lungs to look at the drone, I forgot that there was 300 people and the people that were far back didn't hear me. So when I took those pictures, they weren't focused. So my first mistake was I should have kept the ladder there, climbed up the ladder, and gave the cue to look at the drone when it was time to shoot the picture. I'll learn next time. And my second mistake was rushing. There was so much adrenaline that I didn't quite nail the position of the drone. It was close, but it wasn't perfect. But I rushed and I took the photos anyway. Nonetheless, I thought I had all the photos I needed. So I landed the drone, thanked everyone, and called it a day. Well, the results were in. I think the drone photos are interesting, but they weren't quite as good as the DSLR photos. Here are the results, you can see for yourself. Let me know what you guys think. But next time, hopefully the drone shots will be much better. There's so much to learn about this drone, and I haven't even gotten into the video capturing capabilities. For example, there's tons of tracking modes so you can move around and the drone will fly and follow you and it'll follow you while it's turning or it's following you at an equal distance or it's following you and it's moving parallel to you. There's just tons of things to do with it and I have yet to scratch the surface of all the features this drone can do. And there you have it. That's my first experience using a drone. Quite exciting. Anyway, if you liked the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to this channel. Your support is always, always appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.